Hey everyone, welcome into episode two of this interactive tutorial. Uh, as I mentioned at the end of episode one, we're going to learn some advanced techniques now and beginning with using windows as walls. So I have two examples here and one thing I want you to note is that I made both of these using the same piece. So this wall and window set is all this piece just colored differently. And same with this one, it's all just one window, I just changed the color. Um, so anytime you're not building on the grid, well even if you're, even if you are building on the grid, I should correct that. Anytime you're building anything in the game, um, it is helpful to have these little archer guys. Um, you, if you watch a lot of Planet Coaster time lapses, you'll probably see them in the background. And that's because they're, they're about the same size as the peeps in the game. So it's really helpful to get an idea of scale and perspective by having them next to whatever you're working on. Um, and we will discuss scale and size in this tutorial, um, but anytime I'm working on anything, I always wanna make sure that I have those guys um, next to what I'm building on so that I'm making sure I'm not getting too big because the pieces in Planet Coaster are intentionally exaggerated um, and so if you just go by the scale of the piece that you're working with, you're very easily going to get out of scale very quickly. Um, so let's start with this first building here. So we'll take this, hit Control X to copy the whole thing, change to the world grid, and we'll bring it out here. So what I did for this one is I use this as the outline. So anytime you're thinking of using pieces that are not are not for their intended purposes, you always wanna look at the different textures that they have to offer. So this window obviously functions as a window. That was the intention when they created the piece, but the back of it also looks like a pretty nice stone wall. Um, in addition to that, I've also seen people use this texture here as custom curbs. In fact, Mineral Junction in his guest episode of Jubilee Gardens used this as well. So you've got you know a nice looking custom curb there just by using the texture that was provided in the game. Now again, obviously when they created this window, they had no intention of it being used as a curb, um, but the, the benefit of what the Frontier team did is that their stuff's so detailed that there's a ton of variety in the way you can use the pieces in the game. Um, so. We're obviously going to use the back of this piece as our wall. And then all I'm gonna do is go up and use the rotation to bring it around. Tuck it back a little bit so that it looks like it's actually sunken into the wall. And then I'm gonna recolor it. Now, if you, obviously the game has these preset colors, which I find is helpful from a starting point. Um, but then usually I end up fine-tuning them in the palette here. Um, also, if there's a piece you directly want to copy, if you click on the color of it, hit that, and what it's going to do is it's going to populate that as your most recent color that you've used. So you can hit OK, go back into this, and there it is. So you just do that and it's the exact same color. Um, so if you ever want to duplicate colors and don't want to have to remember hex codes or things like that, that's a, a simple way to do it. Then from here, go up one, and I'm gonna, I don't want it to get too tall. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, instead of doing that, where both, piece, both pieces really are truly separate, I'm gonna sort of clip them together a little bit. And then we'll take this bottom one, Control X, go up to the top here. Now let's pull this guy up closer to make sure that we're kind of on scale here. So we might we might be a tad high actually. So what I'm gonna do is con use control to select all of those, position my camera more down at this height, and I want that to be about there, I think. Now there's no right or wrong way to do this sort of thing. You know, depending on what you're trying to recreate, that may have been fine, um, but just for Again, trying to be mindful of scale, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller than maybe I would otherwise. Uh, Control X to copy the whole thing. And again, I'm going to let them clip together here instead of going side by side. 
Um, now, again, there's not really, this isn't like a hard and fast rule. If there's, if there's something that you're creating that has a thicker beam in between windows like this, then you would, you would obviously do that. But, um, for the sake of what the look I'm going for, I want them to be clipped together like that. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of like cooking, you know, like there's, you can add your own spices, you can, you know, tweak the recipe. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, so now we've got our three or our six windows um, that really create one giant window. And then what I'm going to do here is copy these two out so I have a good perspective on how tall and how short I want it to be. Copy it again to this side. Then I'll select those two. Oh, get our little guy out of the way here. Select those two and just work our way up. There you go. You've got a custom window and custom wall. So one thing that I will make note of here is a lot of times when you do this, you can get, it's not so bad with little small pieces like this, but if you use like the big windows, you can get a lot of Z fighting. And, and what Z fighting is, is it's when the two textures are fighting to be on top of one another because they're, you know, you can see them trying to blend together and they don't. So one, one way to remedy that if you are hyper, hyper detailed, um, is what you can do is you can go into the, the advanced move circle here, remove angle snap, and then just very slightly rotate it under and that removes the Z fighting because now now the game recognizes that one of those is under the other um, and it produces a pretty minimal line as well. So that's one that's just like uh, if you're a complete stickler for you know the most minute of details then that's something you can do to, to fix that. So this one a little bit more complex than that. So what I did here, again, we want to turn angle snap, snap back on and we'll reset the rotation. So if we look at the back of this, oh gosh. <laughs> if we look at the back of this wall here, it looks like some nice wood detail. Um, so we'll start with the piece there and then I'm going to rotate it to create our corner. All right, and then because I don't want the window on the outside, I'm gonna rotate this again. Move it down here is just a placeholder. And then I want this beam to be the same thickness, so I'm going to rotate this piece and bring those together there. Then we'll bring this back in to complete the corner. And then again, instead of going and grabbing the piece and trying to make it work, I mean, you could, but um, it's it's easier just to go off of here, I think, because then you know everything is lined up. So we'll rotate it. And I want it to sink in a little bit. Let them intersect one another in the same way as those other windows. And then we're going to copy the color again like we did before. So now it's our most recent color used. Control to select all of those together. Change the color. And then now we're a little bit off. So we're not completely centered here. So I hit X to adjust the, the, um, the positioning of those and center it. And there you go. Now, one thing that you might not like here is obviously this piece is sticking up here. So to, to give it a better finish, um, we'll take this piece here actually and rotate it.
and we'll bring it across. See if we can make that work. Yeah. Okay. Now, let's be mindful of scale as well. So that's actually pretty good. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring these down actually, um, because I want I want some of that blue detail to show up, and then we'll bring all of these down together as well. Sweet. So then the top, if I want to finish it off, we'll just copy those pieces, move them up top there, take the two side pieces we've already created, control X to copy those, and we'll just fill in the wall. So there you go, two, two completely custom walls using the exact same piece the entire time. Um, so hopefully that's something that you, if you've never done before, you see it's really, it's really not all that difficult. Um, you know, the hard part of that is knowing which pieces to use, I think. Um, and really, I, I know I preach this in my videos all the time, but get as much reference material as you can. And it, there's going to be something in the game that is probably close enough to what the finished product is going to be um, or whatever it is you're trying to duplicate and that's the best way to know hey i'm going to use this piece um, is having reference material because if you're trying to do things just from memory your brain doesn't remember unless you have a photo photo or a photographic memory your brain doesn't remember the exact appearance of things um, it has sort of a, a broad sense of what something looks like but I think you'll find more often than not that when you actually start looking at photo references, um, there's a lot of stuff that you would have missed if you would have just tried to create it from memory. So um, always, always, always get photos to use as a reference point, and that will help you know which pieces to use when you start doing this sort of custom work. But the actual process itself is not that difficult. Um, so hopefully that was helpful. In the next episode, we're going to work on building custom roofs. Um, and then the episode after that will be custom domes. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next episode.